Hey, hey, howdy, you guys. Yes, sir. Yeah, I did tell you that, you know, I made money today. Got myself out of this wonderful little business called Rent. And so I can goof off a little bit, okay? But I have a project to do with a friend of mine. I'm just hoping, you know, that get, that it comes alive. That gives us a little extra spending money. But anyhow, we're over here discovering more interesting things as we delve into this forbidden book of the Bible, the second Ezra, the second book of Ezra. And um, I, I would just think that people would just be floored uh, over the, the way that we're going about, you know, reading the Bible. Of course, this idea is new. It's not, but I, I'm hoping that you can get gather this together because it doesn't take an awful lot of intelligence. You don't have to be all that smart in order to comprehend what's going on. Whenever I talk about this code, and when the Bible talks about spiritual, the spiritual side of the Bible, they go hand in hand. I discovered this, but I didn't make it. I just discovered it. And I discover it every time I come and open up the Bible, you know. These things aren't known ahead of time. It's, you know, I've never read this book before. So anyways, just to show that it's still part of the works, this, this, uh, this uh, system of numbers shows up from start to finish. It's absolutely beautiful. It doesn't have anything to do with real life. This is a pattern. This is something that's, that was left to us uh, God knows how many. All of the stories in, Christi in you know, between here and the Buddhisms and, and the Tao and all these things, they all have this code in them. They all came to life at different times on earth, supposedly. All right? Remember, we have to be told, we have to get this, told this information, but it seems as if they've all been around for a really long time. Okay? So anyways, these are these ancient things that we're talking about. Now, we're also talking about the second chapter in this book. Now, the number two, number two is going to be representing God's creation, which is this, this idea of our brains, our consciousness, the male and the female side of our brain is what we're talking about is God's creation. He created us in his image. And all of us, male and females, have the same brain. All right? That's why these stories always have the son of man coming up. Even if you're a woman, you're going to be pop, you're going to be belting out the son of man. Even if you're a woman, it doesn't matter because it's coming from the male side of your brain. And this is how it works. Too bad if you don't understand that. It doesn't take any bit of, of real life schooling to not understand this. You can be a young man, a young boy, a child even, to understand what I'm getting at. Now, this, this code shows up in the second chapter, and I'm going to move out of the way, and I'm, we're going to talk about it just a little bit. Tune your ear to this, all right? We have now got 48 scriptures on this one, okay? That's coming down to 9, 10, 11, 12, which is what what happens when you put 12 together, that's 12 and plus 3. This has happened to do with an intervention, okay? And it's really quite beautiful. But the way you have to look at this is that these are all worlds, again, starting at the top would be one, meaning God, all right, this is really God talking to us. Anyway, send anybody, anytime that you're talking to God, you have to be in a spirit form. So this is all about spirituality, spirit side. It's the spirit side of the text. And this is the way it goes. Just like the first chapter, it's going to run from one through four. It's going to represent the first world. In that first world, every one of those things is going to be talking about God. Second group is going to be about God's creation. God's creation is this male and female sign. And in this particular case, this winds up being this, this 
uh, emotions. This is where the lady shows up. She shows up in lots of places. And she'll be in, she'll be in all these stories uh, in this particular thing. But you'll, what is she doing during that time? So this is the whole idea. So you'll know what where where she shows up. All right. But anyways, God's creation is the, the lower and higher conscious. All right. And this is dealing with what is seen and what is unseen. What is matter and mind. What is invisible? What is spirit? Okay. Then we're going to go through four worlds. <clears throat> In worlds, every one of those are worlds within their own selves. So you're going to get a story. In 13, 14, 15, 16, there's going to be a little story within a story. Which will come to do the same exact thing. So you've got to work with that in your mind. Okay. <coughs> Once you can remember the cadences, one, two, three, and four, you'll you'll be able to recognize where they land in this. Okay, all right. It's always going to be in this in this mode. It's always going to be from west, north, south, and east. Then we're going to come to five. It's the body, the body itself, the human being, the body. You know, the vessel, uh, it's usually the where we were talking about this is the nations, it's the city, it's the city of David, all right? So what we'll get out of this is five, so we get 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now, this body is showing here on 20, it's showing here that this is uh, be good to the widows and fatherless, all right? That's the whole point of this is that um when we don't have god in us we're missing one of this is the widow we're missing something okay we're missing something and this is how we go about getting it all right so that's the body all this is going to be about our body those four in a row and then we got the way the way represents the the how are we going to go about this this is generally a female situation where, you know, you're going in, then, you know, and all this business. But we'll see how this works in the story. But the way is the works. And we got 21, 22, 23, and 24. The Lord's Day comes on the 7th. All right. It's at 25, 26, 27, and 28. 29. I mean, then we get down to control is the number for the 8th eighth, eighth set. This is about, you know, God wanting this and taking over. Remember in the last one, we have, I want you to be, I want you to be, I want to be your God. I want this. It's like, it's a control situation. I'm going to put my hand over you. I'm not going to let anybody ever see. This is a, this is a positive, this is a positive situation. This guy right here, this story. All right. Then the conscious is whether or not you're on the good side or the bad side. When it gets here, it's almost like, what will you know, on 33, 33 is a 6. You can read, put those together and know that this is about, this is about, hey, you guys, you heather, go look for your shepherd. You know, get to your shepherd. He'll fix it for you. All right? Go find him. And then it goes get better. It says, you know, so 35 is, they're talking about the body. Then the body gets clothed in some beautiful white garments, stuff like that. And then it shows over here, 35, 36, and then the conscious side is over. And then you got one, two, three. What is the one, two, three? The one, two, three is the divine intervention. What a wonderful thing happens to these people that follow God's way. All right? So what we're going to do is we are going to now listen to the scripture. And you have to, I wish you had something to read and you could watch along with this. If not, I'll just have to point it out. As we go, okay. All right, because it's something you're going to develop your ear for. All right, so I'm going to get rid of you, and I'm going to turn this one on. Chapter two. Thus says the Lord: I brought this people out of bondage, and I gave them commandments through my servants, the prophets, but they would not listen to them, and made my counsels void. The mother who bore them says to them. Go, my children, because I am a widow and forsaken. I brought you up with gladness, but with mourning and sorrow I have lost you, because you have sinned before the Lord God and have done what is evil in my sight. But now what can I do for you, for I am a widow and forsaken? 
go, my children, and ask for mercy from the Lord. I call upon you, Father, as a witness in addition to the mother of the children, because they would not keep my covenant, that you may bring confusion upon them and bring their mother to ruin, so that they may have no offspring. Let them be scattered among the nations. Let their names be blotted out from the earth, because they have despised my covenant. Woe to you, Assyria, who conceal the unrighteous in your midst, a wicked nation. Remember what I did to Sodom and Gomorrah, whose land lies in lumps of pitch and heaps of ashes. So will I do to those who have not listened to me, says the Lord Almighty. Thus says the Lord to Ezra, Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I was going to give to Israel. Moreover, I will take back to myself their glory, and will give to these others the everlasting habitations which I had prepared for Israel. The tree of life shall give them fragrant perfume, and they shall neither toil nor become weary. Ask, and you will receive. Pray that your days may be few, that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. Call, O oh call heaven and earth to witness, for I have left out evil and created good, because I live, says the Lord. Mother, embrace your sons. Bring them up with gladness, as does the dove. Establish their feet, because I have chosen you, says the Lord, and I will raise up the dead from their places, and I will bring them out from their tombs, because I recognize my name in them. Do not fear, mother of sons, for I have chosen you, says the Lord. I will send you help, my servants Isaiah and Jeremiah. According to their counsel, I have consecrated and prepared for you twelve trees loaded with various fruits, and the same number of springs flowing with milk and honey and seventy mighty mountains on which roses and lilies grow. By these I will fill your children with joy. Guard the rights of the widow. Secure justice for the fatherless. Give to the needy. Defend the orphan. Clothe the naked. Care for the injured and the weak. Do not ridicule the lame man. Protect the maimed, and let the blind man have a vision of my splendor. Protect the old and the young within your walls. When you find any who are dead, commit them to the grave and mark it, and I will give you the first place in my resurrection. Pause and be quiet, my people, because your rest will come. Good nurse, nourish your sons and strengthen their feet. Not one of the servants whom I have given you will perish, for I will require them from among your number. Do not be anxious, for when the day of tribulation and anguish comes, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but you shall rejoice and have abundance. The nations shall envy you, but they shall not be able to do anything against you, says the Lord. My hands will cover you, that your sons may not see Gehenna. Rejoice, O mother, with your sons, because I will deliver you, says the Lord. Remember your sons that sleep, because I will bring them out of the hiding places of the earth, and will show mercy to them. For I am merciful, says the Lord Almighty. Embrace your children until I come, and proclaim mercy to them because my springs run over and my grace will not fail. I, Ezra, received a command from the Lord on Mount Horeb to go to Israel. When I came to them, they rejected me and refused the Lord's commandment. Therefore, I say to you, O nations, that hear and understand, await your shepherd. He will give you everlasting rest, because he who will come at the end of the age is close at hand. Be ready for the rewards of the kingdom, because the eternal light will shine upon you forevermore. Flee from the shadow of this age. Receive the joy of your glory. I publicly call on my Savior to witness. Receive what the Lord has entrusted to you and be joyful, giving thanks to him who has called you to heavenly kingdoms. Rise and stand and see at the feast of the Lord of the number of those who have been sealed. Those who have departed from the window of this age have received glorious garments from the Lord. Take again your full number, O Zion and conclude the list of your people who are clothed in white, who have fulfilled the law of the Lord. The number of your children whom you desired is full. Beseech the Lord's power that your people, who have been called from the beginning, may be made holy. I, Ezra, saw on Mount Zion a great multitude, which I could not number, and they all were praising the Lord with songs. In their midst was a young man of great stature, taller than any of the others, and on the head of each of them he placed a crown, but he was more exalted than they. 
and I was held spellbound. Then I asked an angel, Who are these, my lord? He answered and said to me, These are they who have put off mortal clothing and have put on the immortal, and they have confessed the name of God. Now they are being crowned and receive palms. Then I said to the angel, Who is that young man who places crowns on them and puts palms in their hands? He answered and said to me, He is the Son of God, whom they confessed in the world. So I began to praise those who had stood valiantly for the name of the Lord. Then the angel said to me, Go, tell my people how great and many are the wonders of the Lord God which you have seen. Chapter 3 In the thirtieth year after crazy, the destruction of our Crazy. All right. So how cool is that? Now, again, with the number system, we know it's going to go the right way, even if I could keep up with those numbers or keep up with the poking around. I'm telling you, I'm charging you to go and find this out and see this for yourself, that you would find that it was beautiful. Beautiful. All right? And let's take, for instance, let's go ahead, and I would like to, let's go and mention, let's, let's find this, this four. Let's find out what's going on. 13, 14, 15, and 16. Let's tear them up. All right, since this is what we're on, we're working on worlds. And let's see just what this says. Okay, let me find my other stuff. King James. Okay. And we're looking for the numbers of 13, 14, 15, and 16. So we get go. <clears throat> uh, go. Go, and ye shall receive. Pay for a few days, pray for a few days until you, that they may be shortened. The kingdom is re already prepared for you. And then it says watch. All right. So um, for number 13, go and ye shall receive. Go, go and ye shall receive. This was a command. From our mind. Number four. All right, so be go and ye shall. All right, so then it goes Jesus. And then it goes, uh, ye shall receive, pray for a few days until you pray using your emotion. This is the second one. Pray for a few days until you. And they may be that, that that they may be shortened. That your life, that this days, that your days would be shortened. This is your physical self, all right. And then, on the fourth one, it says, "It is created." Wait a minute, by twelve, it is for the kingdom, which is the spiritual side. For the kingdom is already prepared for you, and says, "Watch." So this is that idea of. Of going into meditation. That's what it means to watch. Because you keep going in. You're waiting. You're waiting. You're waiting. You're waiting. And it's a type of watching. Okay. So that takes care of the first world. Now we got 14. So it says. Take heaven and earth to witness. Take heaven and earth to witness. All right. For I have broken the evil in pieces. This is. Remember this is. The evil is representing religion. It's the works. It says, I busted. This is the bitch. This is the, the outside woman, the strange woman. She fits in here. Because I have broken this to pieces. All right. Then what do we get here? 14. I've broken the evil in pieces and created the good. <clears throat> because now it's good. For now I live, saith the Lord. <clears throat> In case you didn't know it, we're being brought from death into life. Okay, all right. So it says, if, so this this next one is fifteen. Fifteen. Let's see what it says. Mother, mother, embrace thy children. This is where, because this is this is how we bring our our child alive is to our emotional part of us, and this is generally this is all mothering here. But here we got her. Here we go. This is number 15 we're talking about, right? Mother, embrace thy children. Bring them up with gladness. 
That's it. Wait. Mother, embrace your children. Bring them up with gladness because this is a this is a, a up this emotion this thing is this has to do with raising up and down. So you would say because the moon and silver and whatever. This is bring them up with gladness. Where are we going on with this? Um, make their feet as a pillar. For I have chosen thee. All right. And then let's go to the next one. Number 16 over here. We get. For thy help will I send my servants. S.A. and Jeremy. For his. Uh, that's his first one. For our witnesses. Right. Is that it? For, for thy help. All right. Because you got to have the witnesses. And then we have the. Uh, Wait. For embrace thy children, bring them up with gladness, make their feet as a pillar, for I have chosen thee, says the Lord. And the 16, 16, and those that be dead will I raise up. Come on. Will I raise up? Come on, Rick. Where the fuck is it? And bring them out of their graves. For I have known my name, for for I have known my name is Israel. 16, the final one. Alright? So, that should be just some things that kill you. I mean, it should be like, wow, that is just absolutely wild. Okay? But, um, let's not stop there. Let's see where we have this 20 down here. Okay, 20. It says, do right to the widow. Judge for the fatherless. Give to the poor. Defend the orphan, clothe the naked. Every one of those things has to do with what happens to us when we meet God and put him in our lives. That takes care of the poor because you're no longer without God. You're no longer a widow because the two have been married and brought back together again. This is what 20 is talking about. Fatherless, widows, poors, the orphan. The, the child that has no mom and dad? Come on. Every one of those things is part of the Trinity. And if you don't have one of those, you're missing. You'll never make it out. You'll never make it out alive. You know? So that's really, really super cool. And, of course, where these other ones is down here, when it started to say, you know, this is down on the conscious side of things. It's because I want to control you. I want to be your dad. All right? It says, look for the shepherd, you fools. He'll lead you to the right place. Look for your shepherd. That's your, well, in this situation, it's your brother. All right? Oh, well, in all situations, it's the child in you. That's your shepherd. All right? It's just beautiful. And that when you get this, the, you'll have this everlasting light on you forever. All right? And that's that idea of a pillar with a light in the top of it, you know, with a fire in the top. It's just absolutely beautiful. All right. So I don't know that we have to waste any more of our time on this, but how cool was all of that? Fleeing the shadow of this world. Oh, my goodness, you guys. Be ready for the reward of the kingdom, for the, for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Flee the shadow of this world. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify my Savior openly. I receive the gift that is given you and be glad, giving thanks unto them, to, to him that had led you to this heavenly kingdom. Arise, upstand, behold the number of those that are sealed, the feast of the Lord, which are departed from the shadow of this world and have received glorious garments of the Lord. This is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful, you guys. This is a good positive situation here. And it's not something that you're waiting for. It's telling you that it's at hand now. This is how long do we have to deal with this? How long, you guys, are you going to go without? How long do you want to be so simple is what she hollers out. It's just really beautiful. So here we have a positive situation showing up. Not very often that we get that. Okay, so anyways, you write that down because, like I said, it doesn't happen very often. 
And we'll find out. We'll find out on number three. Okay, the third one is about intervention. Remember, all of our chapters are also going to follow in the same number, so you can read ahead of me if you like. Okay? Get up on the teacher. Get your homework. Get your homework over now. Okay? I'll chat with you soon, and I love you guys. I do. Thank you, few of those that come in, meet, uh, with the meet up with the Lord. This idea is, is, is all about making up your mind who you want to serve. How you gonna serve them? When you finally come aboard, you have to say goodbye to religion. But then look at me. I've come aboard and religion is now what I'm all about. Because now I, I have to I do, have to understand that, oh, you're supposed to do this first. That this is not just a bunch of bunk here. Okay, we're not atheists here. But just because we don't necessarily believe in the fleshy business of Jesus and all these other people in this book, or that they're representing history at all, that does not make you into someone that's an atheist. You know, it's the idea that no, you, you're, you're just smarter than the rest of the group. Okay, I don't want to put no labels on us, but we are followers of Christ. And we are doing what God has commanded us to do. So you call yourself what you want. But the last thing you're going to be calling yourself is religious. All right. Best to you guys. And happy traveling for those guys that are new. Okay. It's very simple. We'll be talking about that soon too. In case you don't want to go down looking at the other uh, other things that I have been doing my dedicating my last couple of five six years of my life to to prove and open up this Bible to the ordinary person or ordinary uh, terms and without using any kind of outside or external devices in order to do it with this is just strictly strictly straight up you and me and a Bible that's given me uh, given me its secrets and to the point that it's not mine. It is not my opinion. It is not. It is. It is. It is not. It has anything to do with me other than I'm the messenger. All right. Anyone can do this, and I would. I would suggest that you start learning how to do it. You know, it doesn't sound like you know prophets last very long on this on this earth. Somehow or another, and like the Bible says, they, they get killed, you know, so I'm going to need a replacement. And so someone needs to come and do all this, learn how to do just what I'm doing, you know, and, and be themselves while they're doing. Okay, you know, if you've got to have all that incense and crap, do that, you know, but I'm just normal old guy from, from the Ozarks. And I don't have no airs about me whatsoever. And uh, I just have a big heart. And I guess that's what got me to come over to this other house, side, you know. Anyways, I'm very grateful. And I'm, and, and I'm, I'm really hoping that I can have some company, all right? I'll chat with you soon. And like I said, best, best trip. Good luck on this journey for the newbies.